Hello and welcome to another step-by-step -step beginner's blender course. In today's video, I'll teach you the full process to create this tennis ball. You'll learn how to model, UV unwrap, create maps and materials, a hair particle system, and a basic EV render. Now let's start modeling. First, go to Scene, Units, and set Length to Millimeters. Press A to select all objects in the scene, and X to delete. Press Shift plus A, go to Mesh, and create a new vSphere. Expand the Add menu, set vertices to 16, rings to 8, and rename the mesh. Press N to show the sidebar, set diameter to 67mm, which is the average size of a tennis ball, and unpad dot to zoom on object. Notice that the object scale values has changed after we set the new diameter. To fix this, press Ctrl plus A and select Scale to apply scale. These will reset all scale values back to 1. Press numpad 7 to go to top view, tap to go to edit mode, and 2 to edge selection. Select these 8 edges, press X, and select dissolve edges. Press numpad 9 to flip to bottom view, and repeat the same steps. Press 1 to change back to vertex selection, and Alt plus Z to enable X-ray mode. When enabled, selection isn't included by the object's geometry, allowing to select everything inside the selection box. Go back to top view, select all vertices above the y-axis center, press P, and separate selection. This will separate both hemispheres, creating two meshes. Exit edit mode and x-ray. Select the top mesh and press R to rotate, Y to lock the rotation on y-axis, type 90 to rotate 90 degrees, and enter to confirm. Shift select the bottom mesh and press Ctrl plus J to join them back together. As we separated, and join the mesh back together, these will result in two overlapping edge loops that need to be merged. Go to edit mode, press A to select all, M to merge, and select by distance to merge all 16 overlapping vertices. Exit edit mode. Now to make this mesh a perfect sphere, let's add some modifiers. Go to modifiers and click add modifier. Go to generate and add a subdivision surface modifier. Make sure levels viewport is set to 1. Click Add Modifier, go to Deform, and add a Cast Modifier. Make sure the shape is set to Sphere, all three axes are selected, and set Factor to 1. Now apply both modifiers. Hover the mouse cursor over the modifier, and press Ctrl plus A to apply. Just make sure to apply the Subdivision Surface modifier first, and then apply the Cast Modifier. Now let's create the Tennis Ball White Line shape. Go to Edit Mode, and count from the center. 1, 2, three, four vertices to the left, and press Alt plus left click to select this edge loop. Measuring here, this white line is about three millimeters, so let's create a bevel. Press Ctrl plus B to create a bevel, and enter to confirm. Set width to 1.5 millimeters, and segments to one. Press Alt plus E to extrude, select extrude faces along normals, type minus one, and enter to confirm. Extruding along normals will lock the extrusion to only move along the local normals of the selected mesh. In this case here, all faces will be extruded inside the tennis ball mesh. Select these two edge loops, press Ctrl plus B to bevel, and enter to confirm. Set width to 1 mm and segments to 2. Press A to select all, M to merge, and select by distance to merge all 128 overlapping vertices. Go to the UV editing workspace. With the mouse cursor over the 3D viewport, press numpad dot to zoom on selection. Press 2 on keyboard to add selection, and select these two inner edge loops. Let's add an edge crease to these edges. This will hold these edges in place, and make them sharp after we apply the last subdivision surface modifier. Press Shift plus E to crease, type 1, and enter to confirm. This will set an edge crease value of 1 to these edge loops. Now let's create the seams. Shift select this middle edge here, and this other one here. Press Ctrl plus E, and select mark seam to create the seams. Now we can start unwrapping the model. Press A to select all, U to unwrap, and select minimum stretch. Go to front view, 3 to face selection, and enable UV sync selection. I like to use this feature to ensure my UVs are not inverted or upside down. Select some random faces, and notice where they are on the UV editor. In my case here after checking, I have noticed I need to rotate this UV island minus 90 degrees. Hover the mouse cursor over the UV island, and press L to select. Press R, minus 90, and enter to confirm. Check the other islands, and rotate as needed.
go to UV and check constraint to image bounds. This will lock the islands inside the UV image bounds. Now with L to select the islands and G to move, arrange the islands inside the UV bounds as you prefer. After that, press A to select all, go to UV and select export UV layout. Select the folder, set the image size, choose the name and click export UV layout. Now let's create the mask map. For this part of the course, I'll be using Affinity Designer to create a simple mask for the shader. If you don't want to put a logo or a text on a tennis ball, just skip to the next chapter. Here I'm just creating a very small square on the middle vertex of this UV island to use as a guide. Now all I have to do is select the square, control select the logo, and on alignment, select align center on both horizontal and vertical axis. Delete the square. As the idea is to use only the white parts of the logo, I'm going to need a black background. Create a rectangle, change color to black, and put below the logo. Hide the UV layout, press Ctrl plus Shift plus Alt plus S, and export as a PNG file. Go to the shading workspace. This is a shading workspace. I'm going to make some changes here to my liking. Feel free to copy if you want. I'm going to use Fabric 34 PBR texture from ambientcg.com. You can find the link for this texture in the video description. With the mouse cursor over the 3D viewport, press numpad 1 to front view, numpad dot to zoom on object, control plus 2 to add a level to subdivision surface modifier, right mouse click and select Shade Smooth. Click New on Shader Editor and rename it Green. This will create a new material with the principal BSTF shader. The principal BSTF shader combines multiple layers into a single easy to use node and can model a wide variety of materials. Now let's start adding some nodes. For this course, we're going to use five nodes. Texture Coordinate node, used for the coordinates of textures. Press Shift plus A, go to Input, and add a Texture Coordinate node. Mapping node transforms the input vector by applying translation, rotation, and scaling. Press Shift plus A, go to Vector, and add a mapping node. Image Texture node, used for applying an image as a texture. Press Shift plus A, go to Texture, and add an Image Texture node. Mix Color node mixes color inputs using a factor to control the amount of interpolation. Press Shift plus A, go to Color, and add a Mix Color node. Normal Map node generates a perturbed normal from an RGB normal map image. Press Shift plus A, go to Vector, and add a normal map node. Let's start connecting the nodes to create the material. Connect the Texture Coordinate node UV socket to the Mapping node Vector socket. This will use the UV unwrap we did before as the coordinate for this material. Connect the Mapping node Vector socket to the Image Texture node Vector socket. Now we are able to control the location, rotation and scale of this image texture. Select the image texture node and press Ctrl plus Shift plus D to duplicate two times to the bottom and one time to the top. On the first one, click Open Image and load the tennis ball mass map we've created before. On the second one, click Open Image and load the Fabric 34 color map. On the third one, click Open Image and load the Fabric 34 roughness map. And on the fourth one, click Open Image and load the Fabric 34 normal GL map. Change all image texture color spaces to non-color. Usually, we don't set maps that are related to the base color as non-color. But in this case here, after some tests, I like the result better. Connect the second image texture node color socket to the mix color node color A socket. Click on color B and set hue to 0.225, saturation to 1 and value to 1. Set Blending Mode to Color Burn and Factor to 1. Duplicate the Mix Color node, set Blending Mode to Mix and Color B to White. Connect the first Image Texture node color socket to the second Mix Color node Factor socket. This will make the mask map control the mix between color A and color B. The blacks in the mask controls color A and the whites color B. Connect the first Mix Color node Result socket to the second Mix Color node color A socket. Connect the second mix color node result socket to the principal shader's base color socket. This will create the base color of the material. 
Connect a third image texture node color socket to the principal shader's roughness socket. This will control the material reflections. A value of 0 or black gives a perfectly sharp reflection, while 1 or white gives a diffuse reflection. Connect the fourth image texture color node socket to the normal map node color socket. Connect the normal map node normal socket to the principal shader's normal socket. And for last, to add a little bit more realism, expand the sheen menu and set weight to 0.5. If you want, you can play with the mapping scale value, but for me, a value of 1 is perfect. An easier way to control this is to add a value node, so you can control all three axes at once. Just remember that if you change this value and set anything other than 1, connect the texture coordinate UV directly to the mass texture. Now let's create the material for the white line. On Material Properties panel, click the plus sign to add a new material slot. Select the green material from this list, click this two to make it a single user, and rename it white. Select the mask, both mix color nodes, and press X to delete. Now connect the color map to the principal shader's base color. On 3D viewport, press Tab to go to Edit Mode, select this face loop, and click Assign. Press Tab to exit Edit Mode, and return to the layout workspace. Now let's add the final touch and create a hair particle system. Go to Render Properties, Curves, Set Shape to Strip, and Additional Subdivision to 3. Go to Edit Mode, press 3 to Face Selection, L to select both green islands, and Ctrl plus minus sign to select less. Go to Object Data Properties, click the plus sign to add a vertex group, rename it Hair, and click Assign. To make sure the vertex group is correct, Press Ctrl plus Tab and select Weight Paint. All areas in red means a value of 1 and the blue areas a value of 0. Press Ctrl plus Tab, select Object Mode, set diameter to 66 mm, press Ctrl plus A and apply scale. Go to Particle Properties, click the plus sign to add a particle system and select Hair. On Emission, set number to 1000, C to 0, Length to 0 mm, and segments to 5. On render, set render as path, material to green, check B spline, and set steps to 3. On children, select interpolated, set render amount to 1000, length to 0.5, and threshold to 0.5 to create variations on hair strand size. On children roughness, set endpoint to 0.001, shape to 5, and random to 0.002 to create variations in hair strength shape. On hair shape, set diameter root to 5mm and tip to 0.5mm to make the hair strength thinner. And on vertex group density, select the hair vertex group to create hair strands only on the green parts of the tennis ball. Now let's set up a basic EV render. For the HDRI, I'm going to use Stadium01 from polyhaven.com. You can find the link for this HDRI in the video description. First let's create a camera. Press Shift plus A and select Camera. Set Y location to minus 250mm, press Numpad 0 to go to Camera View, Z to Shading and select Rendered. Go to Word Properties, click this yellow dot next to Color and select Environment Texture. Click Open and load the Stadium 01 HDRI from polyhaven.com. As I want to render the tennis ball with a black background, let's go back to the Shading Workspace. On the Shader Editor, Change the shader type to World. Duplicate the background shader and set color to black. Press Shift plus A, go to Shader, add a mix shader and place it on top of this line. Connect the black background socket to the mix shader bottom socket. Press Shift plus A, go to Input and add a light path node. Connect the each camera ray socket to the mix shader effect socket. This will make the HDRI to keep lighting the scene, but not showing the final render. And for less, let's create a light source. On 3D viewport, press Shift plus A, go to Light, and add a Sunlight. Expand the Add Light menu, and set Y rotation to 45 degrees. Click the Light color, set Saturation to 0.2, and Strength to 10. Go to Render, Color Management, and set Look to High Contrast. Go to World, click this arrow, and set HDRI strength to 0.5. Now press F12 and check the final result. In less than 15 minutes, we've created a tennis ball from scratch. 
from modeling to final render. If you're still here, it means you are liking the content of this channel. I really want to thank you for spending your time with me learning some basic Blender. I hope you have enjoyed as much as I have making it. So please, consider subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it and leave a comment. Thanks a lot for watching and see you on the next one. Bye bye.